Hello and welcome. In this short video I want to show you how you can clone a GitLab repository into a running pipeline. You may wonder why one wants to clone an entire repository into a job in a pipeline. This is not an exhaustive list, but reasons may include that you do not want the developer to include any scripts that not directly pertain to their application in their project. Another reason may be that you want to make sure that the job that's executing a script will always have the latest scripts, the latest versions of that script available. And one other reason could also be that you only want to maintain one single project in which you will have all your scripts and once you make a change to one of these scripts, all projects that are cloning this repository will automatically have the latest version. In this demo, I will keep it really simple. I will have one application project which will have in their pipeline three jobs that will be run. In job two of this pipeline, I want to clone my template project into the job and execute a script that is maintained in the template project. Let's go ahead and get everything set up. Here I am in my GitLab instance at gitlab.com in which I set up a group called demos. In my demos group I do have two repositories. One of them is application and one of them is script templates. The application is my mock or make-believe application that will run the pipeline. In job 2 I want to go ahead and clone the script templates repository and execute a script, in this case a Python script in here and in this example what this Python script will do it will just simply print out environment variables which are the pipeline ID and project directory. If you are not familiar with GitLab predefined variables, you can head over to docs.gitlab.com and look for predefined variables or simply go into Google and search for predefined variables GitLab, which will then give you a link to this page. On this page, you will find all the environment variables that are available for you to use in a GitLab pipeline. Now that we've taken a look at the script templates repository and the script that is within that project, let's go ahead and take a look at, that, the, at the application. To keep it simple for this demonstration, I have just created a GitLab CI YAML in the application repository uh, and in the end the jobs are not doing any kind of real work. Um, because this is just for demonstration. However, to walk real quick through my GitLab CI YAML, I have my stages, job one, job two, job three, and then I have my jobs declared here and the appropriate stages. In job one, I will just echo out that the job is running. I'll do the same in job three. And in job two is where we want to clone our GitLab repository. Uh, for this demo we will be using the default GitLab runner. The default GitLab runner does have Git available so we do not need to use a separate image um, to run the job in a Docker container and we can simply use the default GitLab runner that is available. You may notice here that there is something additional in my uh, repository URL. As you can see, we have to use OAuth2 authentication and we are passing in a value called clone key. Let's take a look at what that is. Because both of my projects are set to private, I will need to use an API key or a personal access token to authenticate to GitLab and gain access to my script templates in order to clone it into a different job in my group. 
to set up a personal access token, simply go on this icon for your user, edit profile, and then in the user settings, click on access tokens. Here you can give your token a name, you can assign the appropriate permissions, and then you can create your personal access token. Once you generate your access token, make sure to copy the value right away. It will only be displayed once. If you miss to copy it, you will have to create a new token. I have created the token already and I have granted read repository and write repository permissions, which you can select here when you create your token. Once I created my token, I need to make it available for use within my group. In order to do that, you can simply go to groups. In my case, is the group is demos, settings, CICD. In here, you want to add the value of your token as a variable. So when you add the token, you will need to provide the name which is the key, the value, and then I do suggest you always want to mask this variable. That means in the logs this variable will never be displayed as text and it will be only displayed as a masked value. So nobody can see it and you make sure that it is secure. At this point I also want to point out if your project was not private and it was either internal, if you have an organization set up, or if it is public, you can also create a deploy token and use the deploy token to clone your project. However, in this example, because everything is set to private, we will be using an API key. Back in my application project, taking a look at the GitLab CI YAML, taking another look at the uh, git clone command now you understand why we have the oauth2 here and we use the clone key the personal access token to authenticate to gitlab and gain access to clone this particular project i am running this command in the before script uh, you don't have to i just like to keep it separate you can also run this command in the script section. Um, however, again, just to keep it clean and organized, I run it in the before script. Now let's go ahead and run the pipeline and see if our project really does clone. I am in my application project, pipelines, run pipeline. I have everything checked in on my main branch. If I run my pipeline, we will see our job one executing. Let's take a look if it really echoes out that job one is running. And you see here too, this is the default image um, that is the shared runner um, for gitlab.com. And you see here, job one is running. Let's go back to jobs. Job two is running now. This is now where it is cloning our script templates. As you see, it did this here. It cloned our uh, repository. It echoed out job two is running. And my Python script has been run. And it is uh, running or printing out the pipeline ID and the directory. And the job ran successful. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and see what happens if we are changing our scripts project or our templates. Let's go into script templates. I will not clone this project down to my local machine. I will simply make the change in here. Let's edit this. And let's assume we make a change to the script. It's doing something useful for this demo. It's not doing anything useful. But let's just say I made a change. And all I did here is I've just updated my 
templates repository. That is it. I did not make any changes to any other projects. And let's go ahead and run our pipeline in the application repository again. And see if it actually pulls the change and runs the new script. Job 1. I will not take a look at it right now. Let's go straight into job 2. It may take a second. Now it starts executing. And it is accepting the change. This goes to demonstrate how you can maintain your scripts that you may want to run in certain jobs in your GitLab pipeline. You can maintain them in one single project and the changes are immediately available in all projects that are cloning this particular repository. So to summarize, in order for you to be able to clone a repository in, into a job in a running pipeline, you should create a repository that will hold your custom scripts. In that project, you should not create a GitLab CI YAML because we are not writing any kind of code that needs to be executed in a separate pipeline. Then you need to create a, a personal access token um, and that personal access token will need to have read and write on repositories then you want to add the value of that token as a GitLab variable, either on the project or the group level. And then when cloning your repository in your job in the running pipeline, you want to use that token value and authenticate to GitLab.com.